Good morning, church. Good morning. Y'all did pretty good this morning. I'm impressed, you all. Um, well, this morning, uh, as I was watching this video and just throughout this holiday season that we're going into, it's uh, always so exciting. Christmas uh, to myself has always been a very exciting holiday. And uh, when you think about it, it all goes back to biblical reasons. Uh, and I, I'll share that with you right here in just a second. But, you know, Christmas is always a time of hope. Uh, there's always people hoping for something, um, hoping for the perfect present or whatever the case may be. Well, Christmas, even from the very beginning, was all about hope. Well, how was Christmas about hope? Well, for years, the Israelite people had been told about the coming king, the coming Messiah, but they still hadn't seen him yet. So all this time, the reason we are celebrating Christmas, the Israelites were waiting on the coming king, the coming Messiah, and then he arrives on earth. Emmanuel, God with us. So that is what Christmas is all about. The Israelites had to wait for it. They'd been prophesied for many, many years. And then Jesus is here with us. And we do the same thing at Christmas, right? We, we hope for that perfect present. We hope for uh, perfect family gatherings. We are very hopeful this time of year. But there's one thing about it. Since Jesus has come to earth, born us unto us as a little baby in a manger, we have hope because Jesus has come. He has lived. He has died for us. And we have the hope of eternal salvation um, through Jesus. So Christmas is always so exciting. I love celebrating Christmas. I, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited for this beautiful weather today. Uh, it's absolutely awesome. But our hope and salvation comes through the birth of Jesus. So as we celebrate Christmas this year, let's try to keep uh, our thoughts and everything on who the season is really all about. Uh, don't worry about whether you're going to have the perfect Christmas or the perfect dinner or anything like that, but keep your thoughts on Jesus, the perfect one, um, who provided us eternal life and the hope of him coming. So this morning we do have some announcements. The first announcement is the Christmas parade. Got a little wet yesterday, so they ended up canceling the uh, Christmas parade, or I'm sorry, not canceling, postponing till next Saturday. Uh, we're going to meet here still at 4 o'clock, still at 4 o'clock, next Saturday evening uh, to walk through the parade. We'll get everything together here, and then we'll go to Gate City, and we're going to have the Christmas parade. Also, uh, if you would like to help, we are need, in need of uh, some things for some nursing home um, folks, and we need some slip-resistant socks, crossword puzzles, uh, some body wash, and uh, some hyge other hygiene products. If you want to participate in this, I think we're in need of about uh, 10 residents, uh, so please see Nicole right back here after church. Um, she'll be happy to get you connected and uh, share everything she needs and the dates of when it all needs to be back here so that we can provide for these residents up at the nursing home. All right. Also, coming up, the 24th, a uh, very exciting day. It's going to be on a Sunday this year. Uh, there will be no preteens and no uh, youth or kids' church that day. Uh, s some of the groups will be sharing from the stage, so it's going to be pretty awesome. Please try to make it out for that. Um, and, yeah, that pretty much sums up most of December for us, exciting times. Uh, but this morning, you all, as we worship this morning and as we listen and we're here, let's try to open our hearts to hear a word from God this morning, open our ears to just let him speak into our lives. Um, allow God to just speak into your life because we do have this hope that Jesus has provided for us. And we are all... Uh, given this hope freely, salvation is free. So as we begin to worship and as we are here this morning, let's open our hearts and our ears to hear a word from God this morning and just allow him to speak into our lives and then us take that out into the world this week and this month and your life and speak into others' uh, lives, speak light into others' lives. So if you all will, just bow uh, with me and I'll pray over this and we'll get started. 
Heavenly Father, Lord, we are just so thankful to be here. Father, we're so thankful for this season, the opportunity of hope, the hope that your son Jesus Christ brings into our lives. Without him, there is no hope. Father, you sent him to us, born into us as a babe in a manger, Emmanuel, God with us. And we just cannot thank you enough for the sacrifice that he gives for us. It's through his blood that we have the hope of salvation. Father, we're just blessed and honored. We pray that you just be here this morning, that you fill this church, and that you just open our ears and open our hearts to hear a word from you, God, that you'll speak directly into our lives this morning, and that we will take that and share it with others. Father, I thank you so much, and it's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Y'all stand to worship. You know, I just, it's, it's that season, it's Thanksgiving, it's Christmas, and it is a time of just busyness on top of so many other things. And I think this season, especially this time of the year, it brings out so many things that are already there and it kind of heightens them. And so I just want to take just a second to pray before this message. I am I'm excited to share it with you. I think God has a great word, and I have already felt God this morning moving. And I think this message, this has been on my heart for months. And I've kind of been on the edge this morning just waiting to share it with you because I feel like just God has this amazing word for us, and we just need to receive it this morning. So if you'll just bow your head with me. Father, no matter what is going on in our lives, as we walk through these doors and we sit down or you're listening online, God, I pray that you would just give us peace. I pray that over each person here, each person listening online, each person that will listen to this message, hopefully years after, God. We need rest this morning. God, I pray that you would just open our hearts and help us to just really hear your word and be present right now in this moment that you've provided for us. Believe that everybody who is supposed to be here this morning, Lord, is here, or they're listening online. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to hear your words. We're so grateful for that, God. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, being a busy time... One thing I don't have time to do is really ever watch TV. But when I do, I've really been on this uh, Chosen kick. I don't know if any of you have watched Chosen, but I, the pastor, David Smith, who used to work here, he was always on me, Melanie, you've got to watch this, Melanie, you've got to watch this. Well, I did not pick it up till about four months ago. And now I'm all the way through three seasons, and I can't wait on the next season. It's already playing, but I don't have anything to watch it on. And, and really don't have a lot of time anyway, so I haven't made that happen. But I absolutely, if you have not seen this show, it is just an amazing show to be able to see the humanity of, of what Jesus might have been like. So it takes biblical stories, but then it builds a story around it and just helps you to see just his nature and character. And it's just awesome. And I've, I've learned lots of things. So, but you just have to see it through a lens of, okay, maybe this is what Jesus could have been like. Not everything in it is completely biblical. But that being said, so I've been watching it several seasons. I've been preparing for this message. And something stuck out to me about three or four weeks ago. And I, it had not the whole time. I'd been just listening to it over and over. But this word, every time... Jewish people meet each other, they say the word shalom. And I thought it was, they say it when they meet and they say it when they leave. And I really thought it was kind of like an aloha, hello, goodbye thing. But for whatever reason, God was like, you need to look this up. So I look it up and the word shalom actually means peace. When you think about peace, dictionary peace, when you look it up, it means freedom from war, calmness, tranquility. But this type of peace, the Hebrew word for peace, shalom, is actually much deeper than that. And it means wholeness, completeness, prosperity. 
And so when they greet each other and they say shalom, and Jesus did this multiple times in the Bible as well, it's, it's meaning it could be taken two ways. Like, how is your peace? Are you whole? Are you complete? Or it could be a blessing of peace. Like when you're leaving, I'm, I'm blessing you with prosperity. And I just thought that was so beautiful that when people are meeting and talking, they still say this in Israel today. If you're Jewish and you meet other people, you say shalom. So just to know there's that deeper level. And that's what I want to really talk about. So I've got multiple questions throughout this. And I just want you to kind of reflect and evaluate as we go. But when I say the word peace, what does that mean to you? How do you find it? What are you willing to do to have it? And the video alluded to this right before I got on, but we do all kinds of things and search for peace. We do take vacations. We get massages. Some people hunt. So, I mean, there's lots of things. This is why my husband probably spends way too long in the bathroom. Like, you're just searching for a space and a place of peace, aren't we? Really? Like, I just need some peace, especially if you have children. And it's just, it's overwhelming sometimes. Some people sit in their cars. Some people read. But we're searching for this peace every day. And it's so much bigger than that. Because truly, I think when you get really down to the foundation of some major issues in our lives, this is what we're searching for. You know, I talked to someone recently And their response to a a really hard situation in a relationship was, I just want peace. So sometimes those divorces, those breaks, are because you feel like you need to get out of something. And I'm not saying you don't. But it's that constant quest of we need something and we need rest. This is why some people turn to drugs and alcohol their trauma, the things that they've experienced, they need to numb that so they don't feel it because they're really just searching for what that gives them, which is peace. Prescription drug addictions, freedom from pain, whether it's physical or emotional or mental, we are really searching for this sense of calm in our lives depression and anxiety people who suffer with that that's what they want they want peace they don't want this feeling they don't want this dread and we think truly that if we can get free from this person this relationship this place this pain that we're going to have it And I'm not sure you figured it out yet, but you will at some point if you haven't. That does not exist on earth. Our peace, we tie it to circumstances. But the truth is, even if we get it on that vacation or in that moment, guess what's on the other side of it? It's only for a season. This type of peace is just temporary. It's but a whisper. So you can feel it. You can have that sense for just a little while. But I promise you another storm is coming. So we have got to search for peace. It has to be in a different place that we receive it. So how do we find it? How do we find shalom? How do we find real deep and meaningful peace? And this, this is exactly what God wanted me to share with you today. And when I, when I was studying and reading through and he gave me this message in bits and pieces, it has just given me a completely different perspective. And so I want to share it with you. We're going to turn to Mark chapter 5. So this is what a woman in the Bible was searching for. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. We're going to be looking at verses 25 through 34. And it says, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years, and had suffered many things from many physicians. She'd spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. I have read this story before, 
and it did not stick out to me like it did when I was studying it for this. She had been bleeding for 12 years. As a female, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine what that would have been like. There are physical results of that. She was probably anemic, extremely fatigued. Just the physical side of that would take such a toll on your body. And it says that she's suffered many things from physicians. So she's suffering physically. And she has obviously tried lots of things to get this taken care of. This has even more significance, honestly, in a Jewish culture. I don't know if you're aware, but when you're a Jewish woman and you are bleeding for any reason, whether that's your monthly period or you've had a baby or for whatever reason, you are considered unclean. So for that typical seven days, there are certain restrictions put in place. And the Hebrew word is nida, N-I-D-D-A-H. And the word physically means excluded and separated from other people. So during those seven days that you're unclean, or longer if you've just had a baby, you are not allowed to touch your husband or your father if you're in the same house with your father or grandparents. You physically cannot pass things to each other because if you touch, that person is considered unclean until sundown. And so they just put these things in place so that they couldn't lay together in the bed. They, they physically would separate some women out in the house. And then you would have to go through, at the end of this seven days, you would have to go through a ritual and a bath to clean yourself. You would do a test and you would see, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm done bleeding. And then you would do this ritual bath and then you would be considered clean and you could go back to your normal lives well a woman that has been bleeding for 12 years doesn't have a normal life because at some point they've had to cut her off from the family this would have been very much like leprosy in that day and time these women would be outcasted from society they would not be allowed. And if people found out, and we don't have the tech, you know, they didn't have the technology back then as we do now, so it might be easier to tell if someone was bleeding because it would seep through your clothes and, and all those things. So they were physically outcasted from their people. So she has not only suffered physically, she is suffering a lot of emotional and mental trauma and spiritual trauma because she's not allowed to even be with her family. If she had a husband and it doesn't tell us, they would have long been separated at this point. He would have moved on and probably divorced her. So she wouldn't even be able to be to her close family. And I just think that's so sad. And it says that she spent all she had. So she's also suffering financially. She is at this major point of desperation. And she doesn't know what she's going to do. And then in verse 27, it says, When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If I may only touch his clothes, I shall be made well. And I wonder now that I kind of know the backstory a little bit, if she thought, I just need to touch his clothing because I can't actually touch him because I would make this rabbi unclean and everybody would be upset with her then. I mean, she could have possibly been killed. But she had enough faith to believe that she could just touch his clothing and be made well. And we have access to Jesus right now and a lot of times we don't take anything to him. So the first step in finding peace is that you have to step out in faith. In verse 29 it says, Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But the disciples said to him, You see the multitudes thronging you. And you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see 
her who had done this thing, he knew immediately. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. The second thing besides stepping out in faith is facing your fears. She had a fear of first she was going to have to admit that she had a, an issue that couldn't be solved. And then secondly, her biggest fear was what if Jesus really couldn't heal her? And I feel like this is a place that we're at sometimes that we don't give it over because we have just enough doubt that we don't really believe that Jesus can help us or that he can fix it. So we don't give it away because we don't want to know what the answer is in return. You know, and, and I know, I think we know that Jesus really can. It's not always the way we think the healing will come. But he's always willing. And I love so much that he not only healed her from her affliction, but he physically said to her, go in peace. This is what she was searching for. She wanted peace from all these things. And in the Hebrew language, there's not just one definition of peace. There's actually multiple. And this specific word that he used was exactly what she needed. It was the peace word for what we say as rest. She wanted rest from all this stress and all this brokenness and all these painful things in her life. So my question is, just like this woman, how do we get peace, though? Jesus isn't walking by our church. We can't touch the hem of his garment, so how do we get it? And this is, this is what I love so much about God, because he is such a God of planning and purpose. And Paul says in 2 Thessalonians 3.16, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times, and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. Now may the Lord of peace himself, and this was actually the first piece of this sermon that I got was this verse. God is a God of peace. He is the source of peace. His existence is peace. Gideon built an altar in the Old Testament and he built an altar so that every time he walked by it, he would remember God's promise of peace to us. And he named it Jehovah Shalom, which actually means the Lord is peace. There are references to God being a God of peace all throughout the Bible. He's the source of it. And then, not only is the God source of it, but then God had a son. And in Isaiah 9, 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. He wasn't just called the Prince of Peace, though. He, he's so much more than that. He physically made peace for us between us and our sinful nature and God himself. So God is peace, and Jesus is the Prince of Peace who made peace between us so that we could have it. And then taking that a step further, we look at, so the verse for that's Romans 5. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus actually gave us access to this peace when he died. We don't have to go and touch his hem because he's not here right now. But he gave us access to it. He made a way for us to have peace. And it doesn't end there, but in John 14, 27, Jesus is speaking to the disciples. They're at the Last Supper, and Jesus is sharing the next step for this because he knows what's coming. He's going to die on the cross, and they're going to be left. And it says, John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let your hearts not be troubled, 
and neither let them be afraid. Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit when he died. And when we are saved, we can have peace, P-E-A-C-E, because he physically gave us a peace, P-I-E-C-E, of himself to live in us when we're saved. So all parts of God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, all have peace, are a part of peace, and allowed us access to it. And I want to read that last verse for you of that again. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let your hearts be, not be troubled and neither let them be afraid. See, the world can give us all kinds of distractions and remedies and things that look like peace, but it's a false sense of peace. They're just temporary. So I wonder, where have you been searching for peace in your life? What things have you done to try to find it? And have you really gone to the source that you can actually find true, deep, whole, meaningful, complete peace? And I've always heard this as I was growing up, that we have this God-sized hole in our hearts that only he can feel. But that's exactly right, because the peace of God that we get is exactly what we need to be complete and whole. Jesus reminds us in John 16, 33, I have said these things to you, that in me, in me you may have peace. In this world you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome this world. I don't know about you, but the peace that I want, I think about Jesus on the boat with all the disciples, and he's in the middle of the lake, and this storm rises where people are literally screaming and crying that they're going to die. And he is laying on the deck in all these winds and waves and people being upset, and he is asleep. That's the kind of peace that I want. The peace that withstands all of the trouble of this world. The peace that is able to conquer addictions and pain and divorces and loss. That's the peace that we're searching for. That's what God wants to give us. So how do you get it? You have to ask him for it. You have to be in a place where you're open to receiving it because he gave us access to it in his son. In this world, you're going to have trouble. You may not right now. Maybe your life looks pretty good, but I promise it's coming. Out of the doors, into your relationships, if you have children, you're going to experience issues that no one on this earth can fix for you. There isn't a relationship or a significant other that is going to be able to fix this or take it away. We put so much emphasis on things and people when really we just need to be looking to God for it. We're searching for it in the wrong places. So if you'll just bow your head with me for a minute. I do not know the kind of trouble you're experiencing right now. I don't know the pain that you've had, the trauma that you've had, the issues, the struggles, but I know a God who does. And he wants to give you what only he can give you, which is true, lasting, complete peace. Maybe you're like the woman who has been suffering with something and you're just begging for healing. Maybe you need to take these two pieces on how, how to get it. Maybe, first of all, if you don't have Jesus in your heart, then you don't have peace. Maybe that's the step you need to take. 
Maybe you're just scared and you haven't given over whatever it is that God wants you to lay down at his feet so he can take control of it. He can fix it. The only one who can have any kind of control over it. The altar is open and he is waiting on you. And he wants to fill this place in your heart and this hurt and this pain. Maybe you just need to invite him in. Father, we just thank you that you are a God of peace and of rest and of hope. Help us to listen and hear and see you going through our lives, how you navigate and orchestrate all things for our good. I pray that if anyone here has anything that's really burdening them, that they will come and lay it down at your feet. Father, we thank you for your precious Son who died on the cross to give us access. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that is in our hearts, Lord, that when we invite you in, that it just fills us up. Lord, I will pray for each person here that you will do what only you can do. Lord, I know there's some online right now who didn't come to church this morning because they're sick or they couldn't get out of the bed because they've experienced such great loss that they just physically can't and they feel like they can't go on. Lord, I pray that you would give them the peace that they need, the rest and the comfort that only you can provide. Father, we thank you for all things. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.